Hey everyone, we are back in the kitchen ready for another Disney recipe. This time I asked you guys what you wanted to see. I definitely wanted to go to Disney's Animal Kingdom and get some of those global flavors going on. So I left it up to you, the Cape Malay chicken or the spicy Durban style chicken. The results were overwhelming in favor for the spicy Durban. So that's what we're making today. So we're gonna be making our way over to Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, more specifically Sanaa. Now I did go online. It appears that this dish is no longer on the menu at Sanaa. So we'll see what this is all about. Now I'm gonna be getting this recipe from this cookbook here, Cooking Safari with Mickey. Um, I got this in Disney's Animal Kingdom years ago. It, I don't think it's available anymore. But in going over all my recipes, I found it in this. This is the newest cookbook, the official Disney Parks cookbook, and it is still available at stores and online. All right, so I'm looking over this recipe really quick. It's always important to read your recipes before you start. It looks like we are gonna be making a dry masala, and then after that, we'll go ahead and start making our chicken and curry sauce. So for this dry masala, we're gonna need a whole star anise, some whole cumin seeds, bay leaves, cardamom pods, ground cinnamon, chili powder, Powder, ancho chili powder, madras curry powder, and some turmeric. Now I am gonna have to go to the store and update my spice cabinet because I don't have all these things on hand. So I will be right back. Okay, bad news. I went to my local grocery store, it's a local Kroger, and they had almost nothing that I was looking for. Uh, but luckily Steve ran to the store and he found, uh, I was able to get things like the chili powders and uh, the cinnamon. I really struggled to find the cumin seeds and the cardamom pods. Luckily Steve went to our local farmer's market store and he found those in bulk. So I've got those. The next thing that was tricky was the Madras curry powder. I found lots of different curry powders and spicy curry powders and I think Madra's curry powder is just spicy. I don't know, but I went online since I had a little bit of time and I actually found Madra's curry powder because I figured if I'm gonna do this recipe, I wanna do it right. So with all of our ingredients for our dry masala, let's head on over to the stove and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna toast our star anise, cumin seeds, bay leaves, and cardamom pods in a heavy dry skillet over medium heat for three to four minutes, stirring until spices begin to brown and are fragrant. So now we're gonna remove from heat and let this cool. Look at that, nice and toasted. After our spices are cooled, the cookbook tells us we're going to grind these in a blender or coffee grinder into a fine powder. Now, I have a coffee grinder, but I'm not about to ruin it with these spices. So I did go out to the grocery store and I bought a really cheap, inexpensive one. I bought this one here, it's Krups, it was like 20 bucks. Um, let's do it. All right, everything feels cool to me. So I'm gonna go ahead, pour these right into our spice grinder. Grinding it to a fine powder is what we want. Most of this is a fine powder as of right now. There are just a few little pieces that could probably be ground down a little bit more. There we go, that looks great. Looks good. Pour it in here. I keep looking up because I'm just checking to see if I can, if I have everything in frame. With this ready to go, we will add our other spices. And so we need one teaspoon cinnamon, one and a half tablespoons chili powder, one and a half tablespoons ancho chili powder, one and a half tablespoons of our Madras curry powder. I just got a little sniff of this. It smells just like walking into Yak and Yeti. And then last, two teaspoons turmeric. Mix this all up together. Oh, it smells good. And now we're gonna go back to the stove and we're gonna toast this for another minute or two. Yeah, the cookbook says we're gonna toast in heavy dry skillet over medium heat one to two minutes, stirring until fragrant. Right away, I can smell this. I really smell that star anise. I know we only had one, but it's pretty big. It's kind of got like a, a licorice-y smell to it. Remove from skillet and set aside to cool. And there's our dry masala. So the dry masala, I keep wanting to say marsala. There's no R, it's masala. Our dry masala is done. So now we are back at my cutting board. I'm gonna do a little bit of mise en place because we have some uh, chopping to do. First thing we need is one cup of diced yellow onion. Got my gloves on because the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take two jalapeno peppers and we're gonna seed and mince these things. This looks like a nice mince to me. Next, we want a tablespoon of grated fresh ginger. And if you didn't know, the best way to um, peel ginger is by using a spoon, just a simple soup spoon, cereal spoon. 
it works really great and it really works around all these weird knotted areas. And if you were to use a traditional style vegetable peeler, you'd be taking way too much off. You would get the skin off, but then you'd be losing a lot of your actual ginger. Once I've got two good looking pieces of ginger peeled, I'm gonna go ahead and grate this until I've got one tablespoon. I got more than enough with this. And the last thing I wanna prepare is our garlic. We're gonna want one tablespoon of minced fresh garlic. All right, so I am now gonna switch over my cutting boards and we're gonna cut ourselves up some chicken thighs. Now the recipe calls for one and a quarter pounds of chicken thighs. Don't you hate when cookbooks do that? You can't buy one and a quarter pounds. Why can't we have a pound or one and a half pounds like they sell it at the grocery store, but whatever. So what we wanna do is we wanna take one and a quarter pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're gonna trim the fat from the chicken and we're gonna cut this up into one inch cubes. As you can see, there's a lot of fat left on these thighs here. So we'll get rid of that. I think this is as good as it's gonna get, but it looks pretty good. I mean, I've collected a lot of fat over here. With our fat trimmed as good as I think I can get it, we can start cutting these down into one. Oh, there's a good piece of fat right there. Uh, we're gonna cut these down into one inch cubes. So this is interesting. I have to admit, usually when I'm making a chicken dish, I'm working with the chicken breasts. I rarely am doing something like this um, with chicken thighs. And I have to say, chicken thighs are not the easiest thing to cut up because the thighs themselves are kind of like oddly shaped. <laughs> so trying to get these in really nice, pretty, uniform square cuts can be a bit of a challenge. I do have to say though, with chicken thighs versus breasts, I think these are gonna be much juicier and probably have a lot more flavor. Though I am not making perfect square cuts as the recipe um, requests, I am trying to make my cuts as uniform, or rather the sizes of my cuts fairly uniform. Oh, someone's at the door. Don't you love it when someone rings your doorbell right when you've got chicken crap all over your hands? It was UPS. Okay. As I'm cutting this down, I am finding I can get some of the fat pieces a little bit easier. So, I can, so I'm still trimming off a little bit of fat when I see it. And there we have our one and a quarter pounds boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, I did measure out one and a half, but I think once we trimmed off all that fat, we're probably right about where the cookbook wants us. Now, before we head to the stove and start cooking, I'm gonna season the chicken thighs with a little bit of salt and pepper. Let's add our seasoned chicken thighs over to our little mise en place here. With our skillet over medium heat, we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of canola oil. Let's add our chicken to the pan. And we want them to brown on each side. So I'm gonna kinda, as you can see, I'm kinda pushing these around and then I wanna leave it for a bit. We wanna cook these for about eight to 10 minutes. All right, that looks good, nice and even. I'm gonna let them cook on this side for probably like three minutes. While our chicken is browning, I'm gonna get my tomatoes ready. And I got this question last time as to what I'm using. This is Cento, I think you can see that. Cento crushed tomatoes, canned. Uh, we want three cups of this and one and a half cups of water. After 10 minutes, our chicken looks great. Looks done to me. We'll remove this from the heat and we'll put our chicken in this bowl because we're gonna set it aside. There was a good deal amount of oil in there, so I'm actually gonna strain this out. Still working over medium heat, I am going to add my jalapenos and my chopped onion to the skillet. Let's give this a nice little stir. Looking at this, you know what I should have done? I should have left the the oil in there. But as I mentioned, I did strain the chicken, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the oil. Um, I'm not gonna add all of it. Let's just eyeball it. I think that's what this needs. There we go. That looks better. Because now we have something to like kind of scrape up the brown bits at the bottom. I wanna get that up. But we wanna cook our onions and jalapeno for about four to five minutes or until the onions are translucent. Yeah, this looks perfect. I'm glad I didn't use all of it. I probably used about half, so yeah. All right, this looks good. So let's add our ginger. It's a tablespoon of ginger and our tablespoon of garlic. Give this a quick one minute stir. Oh man, this is where the fragrance comes in. This is where you really get a good aroma in your kitchen. When I'm adding garlic to my recipe like this, again, 
you only want to do it for a minute, maybe even less, maybe like 40 seconds, and you want to keep it stirring all the time. After a minute, we're going to add our dry masala that we made. And the cookbook says to use a spatula, so let's switch over. And we're going to cook this for one minute. And it gets good coverage. Oh man, it smells awesome. After a minute, we will add our three cups of the crushed tomatoes. Let's increase the heat to high. Let's give this a stir. And we're gonna stir this for about three to four minutes. Now let's return our chicken to the skillet. I'm gonna move back over to my wooden spoon. I feel like I have more control with a wooden spoon than I do a rubber spatula. But we're gonna stir this to incorporate our chicken and then we'll add our one and a half cups of water. I'm gonna stir this up real good and we want to bring this to a boil. As you can see, we've got some good bubble action going on. Once we've got it to boiling, we will reduce the heat to low and we're gonna let this simmer for 10 to 12 minutes. While this simmers, I will show you off, off camera, I was making some basmati rice because the cookbook doesn't say this until the very last line, but it says to serve immediately over basmati rice. So that's what I did. A couple other things we can talk about um, in the cookbook while we wait for our sauce to simmer. Um, it says, Chef Mickey says, you can increase the spiciness of this dish by adding additional jalapenos and chili powder. I did sneak a taste just a bit ago. I think the spiciness level for me and my family, I wanna serve this for dinner tonight with Caleb and he, I don't wanna burn his mouth off. Um, I think it tastes great. It needs a little bit more salt, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. Actually, real quick, I need to talk about this. The last ingredient is a quarter of a cup of minced cilantro. After we've simmered for 10 to 12 minutes or until sauce slightly thickens, stir in cilantro. That is a ton of cilantro. A quarter of a cup minced cilantro. This is the picture. This is what it's supposed to look like. There's no way this has a quarter of a cup of minced cilantro. I can see a few cilantro specks. This thing would be green if we did a quarter of a cup. And you know what? Our family, we are not cilantro people, so I'm going to omit that step. Um, you do you. 12 minutes is up and this is looking great. Smells awesome. As I mentioned, I thought it needed a little bit of salt, so we're gonna add a bit more. Give that a good stir. And yes, this sauce has definitely thickened up. Oh, and as I mentioned, I snuck a taste of this. It's got one of those, um, it's got a kick that kind of sneaks up on you. Thinking about it, I just from that taste, I don't know if this is something Caleb can have. Um, but I was thinking about my cilantro comment. Um, I'm sure the cilantro probably slices through that heat and kind of adds a little bit of a cooling effect. But yeah, my family, we, we all, we just hate cilantro. But I think this is done. Let's get some basmati rice on a plate, serve this up and eat. With our rice here, ooh, our rice is hot and steaming. So let's put a little bit of rice on our plate, create a nice bed here for our chicken. And because I want this to look super pretty, I'm not gonna spoon the sauce on. I'm gonna take some tongs, and you don't have to do this obviously, I'm just doing this because I want my thumbnail to look fabulous. <laughs> but I am going to just gently and strategically place my chicken in nice looking places. And you know what? It almost doesn't need to. I mean, it's gonna be, it's a lot easier obviously to spoon it on to um, your rice. But as you can see, the sauce is clinging really nicely to the chicken looks awesome. Maybe get one more piece. And though we are not a cilantro family, I will take a sprig of cilantro here and just kind of dress up this a little bit. So it just needs a little green, a little color. And how about that? Okay, so who's hungry? This looks fantastic. Mmm, smells good, smells spicy. I definitely get the fragrance and that aroma from that dry masala that we started the recipe with, so that's great. I don't really taste, I, I don't really smell that star anise as much anymore like I did before, um, but I can still taste, or I can still smell that cardamom, um, the cumin, 
Oh man, let's dig in. Oh, that is good, especially with the rice. Rice gives it just a little bit of a texture. Now, when I tasted the sauce earlier, I didn't notice the spice right up front. It was something that kind of developed a little bit later and it's happening again. That first bite, that first taste, you don't really get, you don't really get it, but it kicks you in the end. Now, whenever I make dishes like this or if we're ever in the Disney parks and I'm talking about um, something we've had, we almost always get the comment asking if it's really spicy because a lot of you guys don't like the spicy stuff. I would say this, it is a little spicy. And I, as you saw, I made the recipe as is. Chef Mickey says we can add more jalapenos and chili powder. I wouldn't do that. If you wanna make this, you wanna try and be adventurous, you don't normally like spicy stuff, but you wanna try this out, leave it as is. Or, and you know what you could probably also do is maybe just add um, one jalapeno instead of two. So I hate to say this, I do think it's good. And I think the effort um, that you have to put into this to create it is not too bad. I would say this is a fairly moderate recipe. Um, I, I do have to say, I wish it had a little bit more flavor. Considering everything we put in it, including making our own dry masala, I'm not really picking up any of that ginger flavor at all. Um, it's good. It's very good. I just, you know, let me, hold on one second. It's good. I don't think it's as good as if we're talking about Sanaa and I usually get the butter chicken there. Oh my gosh. I would say that is my favorite thing ever. That is the way to go. I like that more than this, but this is still very delicious. As I said, it's a moderate recipe, so it's not gonna kill you in the kitchen. Um, at least it shouldn't. Um, but I think the reward is pretty good. But now is the time when I invite Steve to try it and he's upstairs working, so he hasn't heard any of this. Let's see what he says. Got a fresh bowl for Steve. All right, so this smells amazing. I've been upstairs just starving. Can't wait to try this. So looks amazing here. I'm gonna go ahead and dive in. This is like the most tender chicken I've had in a long time. The flavor's good. I know it's supposed to be spicy, but it's not coming across as that spicy, maybe just because it's my first bite. Um, but I love this. This is absolutely delicious. All right, after my third bite, I'm starting to get that heat. So it's very good, but it's it's approachable. I don't think it's gonna be like, it's not gonna turn you off right away and be overly spicy. This is really well balanced. Well, there you have it. Steve was a big fan. Thinking about it while he was taking his bite, I was wondering if maybe the sauce needed just a little bit of acidity. I don't know. I'm not as talented in the kitchen as most of you think, um, but I thought overall, this was a pretty good recipe. Of course, now it just makes me wanna make this Cape Malay chicken curry all the more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And from our magic family to yours, enjoy. Mm -hmm.